C Mac. Hey. Light switch. C one. Tape one. The whole idea started when we were cleaning up after the part of me music video release party and Jeff looked over to me and he's like, Yo, for the next one, I want to do something super cinematic and crazy. I want to make a movie. A movie. Whoa, dude. Let's do it. So as soon as Ethan told me this story about how the robots would be coming alive again and becoming more human, um, I immediately thought that the lab could be in the studio. So right where we're sitting, in these walls, the lab was made. So we used the already existing racks and shelves that we had already, cleared everything else out, and set up the camera on an angle that it just looked like a blank slate. And then from there, we basically just started picking up bits and pieces from basically anywhere, KW Surplus to Turner Plumbing to the, the side of the store. road, the dollar store. I even had some friends of mine and really amazing prop designers and builders create the turntable that is in the video. So almost every scene that you see in the starting piece is shot in this studio. So whether we use the hallway outside or the other room, or we just transform this room into something totally different, it was all shot within this room. So now that we had all the ideas, Ethan took all the ideas, put them together in a script, and formulated something that people could read and use to act out the scenes that we wanted them to. And I wanted to make it kind of funny and lighthearted, but also getting across the point of this light switch idea, pre-shadowing that in the intro to the video. All the while while I was doing that, Jeff was starting to think about shooting this and, and executing it on that front. So when I started thinking about shooting the video, I immediately thought of this vintage look that I wanted to go for. So that included using mist filters and some grain in post-production as well as the color editing to match what I was thinking in my head. So that brings us to a really important part of the whole thing is bringing all of this together into one place. Doing that, we used the program Melanote, which is a super easy way to have everybody involved in the shoot able to see everything all at one time in one place. So this is the place where we put the location, the times, the script, we had a mood board. We had some crazy stuff in there too, like we had some sound effects that we were already collecting, thinking about using. We had maps in there of like locations, we had headshots of the talent and crew, so it was really pretty comprehensive. So once we had everything in this place and the script in hand, I sat down for a couple nights and I started to draw on my iPad. So I went scene by scene and frame by frame and slowly formulated a way that we can actually execute what we were thinking. Some of the shots didn't actually end up making it into the final production, but a lot of them did. A lot of them were almost exactly how they were drawn on the storyboard, turned into real life. It's a crazy feeling when you actually see something that you thought of in the past come to life in the exact way that you thought. And I think that was one of the most exciting parts for me, was seeing on the back of the screen as we were shooting it, how it looked and like getting excited over the whole thing. One of the crazy parts about that though is you have to be flexible still because when we went and we shot our scene at the bowling alley we had this whole plan but then when we sat down to edit that scene it didn't really work out in the way that we had imagined so we had to kind of flip it around juggle some clips and it turned out really well but Still having that plan and having that map was huge in terms of getting all the shots we needed. A lot of people see the music video for the first time and they're like, wow, this looks like a movie, that's crazy. How much of that is the camera gear and how much of that comes into play in post-production? For the most part, everything was shot with photography lenses on a Sony camera body. And it's a little bit surprising because Something at this level probably warrants having a cinema camera, but I think I just made everything work in the way that 
I shot it as well as the way that I edited it. One of the things that made this video so incredibly special and what it really is were all the people that were involved in the making of it. Talking about that, I had my sister Shayna choreograph a piece for the music video, and here she is. So this is my sister Shayna. She's a very talented dancer and choreographer. Oh. Well, let's wind it back a little bit. The first time I heard the track, I locked eyes with Jeff and I said, I need to dance to this. From listening to the track to seeing choreography in my brain is like a bit of a process. After I listened to it, it was pretty obvious that it has like a decent amount of bass. So when I hear that, it, I, my body goes into more of like a hip hop realm um, and less of like fluidity. But the nice thing about the track is that the vocals are not as sharp as what the beat is. So I could bring in like a little bit of softness into the choreography. The choreo came pretty quickly because I was using accents in the music, but also in the lyrics as well. But I was working with two colleagues of mine Number one, my boss, my employer, Megan Seaman, who is also a dancer, and one of my students, who I work with all the time, Bridget Britton. Um, both of them were super awesome to work with. They picked up the choreography instantly. On set, we probably ran it like maybe six times back to back. Yeah. Um, so I was getting a pretty good sweat going there for a little bit. So yeah, the experience was amazing. I feel really, really lucky to be brought on to do something like this. Thanks guys. Thanks for bringing me on. Sick. Light switch. That was awesome. So the schedule was super tight because we had so much to shoot in such a little time but Ethan put together a schedule that would somewhat change throughout the days to just accommodate everything we had to do and the people that we had to have on set for the shots. So everything sort of got jumbled a little bit, at least a tiny bit on every day, but it ended up working out and it was really nice to have a schedule so that we could stick to that and make sure that everybody got to leave on time and everybody got here on time. That leads us into our next step, which was execution. And one of the things with the schedule being so tight was we really didn't have a whole lot of room to take like hundreds of clips. We had to just get the shots we were looking for and move on. And you'll see all about that in part two. Ow! Sat on your iPad? Sat down. <laughs> just sat <laughs> on my iPad. <laughs> So I pulled. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows it's a wig. 